If you ever rolled a piston across the floor, you have probably noticed that it's impossible to get it to roll straight. Watch. No matter how many times you try to roll it, you're going to notice that it always diverges from a straight path. And it always goes in the direction of the piston crown. So what does this tell you? Well, it tells you that the piston isn't a perfect cylindrical shape. It doesn't have straight sides. And you can confirm this very easily by putting the piston on a level surface and putting a light source behind the piston. And if you move it, if you rock it from left to right, you're going to notice that the piston sides are actually tapered. So why are they tapered? I mean, the piston is going into a perfect cylinder, the cylinder of the engine block. So why are the sides tapered? Shouldn't the piston fit the shape of the cylinder? Well, no. The answer to that is very logical, and that's that pistons, of course, experience great amounts of heat. The heat comes, of course, from the combustion process happening in the engine. Now, all parts of the piston do not experience equal amounts of heat. And as we know, pistons, made, being made from aluminum, they expand under heat. And of course, the part that's closest to the combustion is going to expand the most and this is why pistons need to incorporate a taper going from the top towards the bottom of the piston the piston gets more and more tapered and this is because the top is exposed to most heat and the bottom is exposed to least heat now the tapered sides of the piston serve two purposes they both stabilize the skirt inside the bore and they prevent the piston from binding or seizing if we had straight sides instead of tapered ones we would have one of two negative scenarios scenario one would be that we would have good ring seal at the top but a loose fitting skirt at the bottom a loose fitting skirt rocks or slaps inside the bore and this causes premature wear the other negative scenario with straight sides would be that we could achieve a properly fitting a stable skirt inside the bore, but at the expense of a ring pack that fits too tight in the bore and is very likely to bind. But there's more to the tapered shape of the piston, and it's actually not a simple straight taper. And if we look at this exaggerated view of the piston's taper, we can see that the skirt incorporates something known as a barrel shape. And the barrel shape does two things. First of all, it strengthens the profile of the skirt, being a rounded shape, but more importantly, it supports the single band of the skirt, which makes contact with the bore. Having less of the skirt contact the bore reduces friction. And that's always a good thing in an engine, because less friction means more power, easier revving, better fuel economy, and so on and so forth. So the barrel shape both strengthens the skirt and offers friction reduction. So what happens when we look at the piston from the top? Looking at it from the top, it has to be perfectly round, right? Because after all, it has to fit in a perfectly round cylinder. Well, the answer to this is both a yes and a no. The piston both is and isn't perfectly round. The top of the piston, the ring pack, is of course perfectly round because it's trying to achieve the best possible ring seal with the bore of the engine. But everything below the bottom ring gland is actually egg-shaped or oval, it is not perfectly round. And to understand why it's egg-shaped, we have to take a brief look at the combustion process inside the engine. So here we have a piston rod and crank rotating inside the engine. So what's going to happen when combustion occurs and combustion pressures try to force the piston down the bore? Well, what happens is that this side of the piston is going to bear the most load. It's going to be exposed to most of the stress due to the position of the piston in relation to the rod and the crank. What happens is that when combustion occurs, the piston is almost trying to lean towards this side in the bore and this side of the bore is always going to be the one that sees the most where and this is why this side of the piston is called the major thrust side the side of the piston opposite to it is called the minor thrust side in all clockwise rotating engines which is the vast majority of engines the major thrust side is always going to be the left side of the piston when looking at the engine from the front in counterclockwise rotating engines the major thrust side is always going to be the right side of the piston when looking from the front of the engine 
So the axis of the piston along which you can find the major and the minor thrust sides is of course called the thrust axis. And the piston skirt along the major and minor thrust sides must follow a perfectly round contour to provide maximum stability to the skirt in this area so that it can better bear the loads of combustion. But what about the other axis of the piston, the one along the piston pin? Well, this one is different. It doesn't need any extra stability and this is why it doesn't need to follow a round contour in this area because the piston pin actually fully stabilizes the skirt along this area. So if the skirt along the piston pin axis would have a fully round contour, it would actually provide extra friction without any strength or stability benefits. So they may look simple and round, but they're actually not. Modern pistons incorporate a complex multi-dimensional shape that helps them do pretty amazing things. And engineers get the difficult task of calculating just how much taper and how much of valley should be incorporated in different pistons for different applications. And if you compare modern pistons to some from 50 or 60 years ago that have a much more primitive, simplistic shape uh, that is deprived of advanced geometries, you can see just how far pistons have come in the last half century or so. So there you have it, that's pretty much it for today and I hope this little video helps you better understand the actual shape of the pistons inside your engine. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.